Hey everybody, welcome back to my second video on integration by parts. And I want to go over a harder example than in my first video. So let's say we have the integral of e to the x multiplied by the sine of x dx. And while we're working out this example, it's not going to seem like it is an integration by parts problem. But in the end, when we solve this, uh, we will find out that Indeed, we can solve this using integration by parts. So let's get started right away. I'm going to go back to my formula, and the first thing I'm going to do is pick my f of x. And in my first video, I told you that you need to pick f of x so that f prime is simpler than f of x. And this is not possible in this particular example. Um, if we picked e to the x as f of x, then f prime is e to the x as well and that is the same, it's not simpler. And if we pick the sine of x as f of x, um, f prime of the sine is the cosine of x, which is also not simpler than the sine of x. So uh, in this particular example, it doesn't matter uh, what you pick as your f of x, so I'm going to pick my sine of x as the f of x. So our f of x is equal to the sine of x, and our f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the sine of x, which is the cosine of x. So now let's pick our g prime of x. And the only thing left in our integral is e to the x. So we know that this e to the x has to be our g prime. So our g prime of x is equal to e to the x. And if we know g prime is e to the x, we can take the integral of that to find g of x. The integral of e to the x is also e to the x. So now we just need to plug everything into our formula. We'll start with our f of x, and we know that the f of x is equal to the sine of x. So I'm going to plug in the sine of x for f of x. And this is being multiplied by g of x, and I know that e to the x is g of x, so I'm going to plug in e to the x for g, and this is being subtracted by the integral of f prime of x. We know the f prime is equal to the cosine of x, so I'm going to plug in the cosine of x for f prime, and that's being multiplied by g of x, and we know that the g of x is equal to e to the x, so I'll plug in e to the x for g of x, and this is being multiplied by dx. So now we just performed integration by parts, but our new integral is not any easier to solve than our integral that we started out with. We had the integral of e to the x times the sine of x, and now we have the integral of cosine of x times e to the x, and it's not any simpler to solve, it's the same. So this is something that is, is not intuitive. What we actually need to do is do integration by parts again. So let's forget about the left side of the equation just for the moment, and let's perform integration by parts again for this new integral that I have. So now I'm going to erase everything I have here on the bottom left, and we're going to perform integration by parts again. So once again, the first thing I'm going to do for integration by parts is I'm going to pick my f of x. And our new integral is almost the same as the one we started with, and it doesn't matter what we pick as our f of x. So I'm going to pick the cosine of x to be f of x. So f of x is equal to the cosine of x. And if we know that f of x is the cosine, f prime is the derivative of the cosine, which is the negative sine of x. And now let's pick our g prime of x. The only thing left in our integral is e to the x. So we know that that has to be our g prime. So g prime of x is equal to e to the x. And we know that g is the integral of g prime. So we know g of x is equal to the integral of e to the x, which is just e to the x. So now let's use our integration by parts formula again and rewrite this second integral that I have in this red parentheses. And after we use integration by parts, I'm going to rewrite it again inside the set of red parentheses. So let's start with our f of x. 
our f of x we know is the cosine of x. So I'm going to plug in a cosine of x for f of x. And that's being multiplied by g of x. And we know that our g of x is equal to e to the x. So I'm going to plug in e to the x for g. And that's being subtracted by the integral of f prime. We know f prime is equal to the negative sine of x. So I'm going to plug in a negative sign of x for f prime. And that is being multiplied by the g of x. And g of x we know is e to the x. So I'm going to plug in e to the x for g. And once again, we can't forget about our dx. So now we have used integration by parts again for our second integral. And we can't forget about our left side of the equation. Uh, this is being subtracted by the sine of x multiplied by e to the x. So now let's simplify this as much as possible. On the left hand side we have the sine of x multiplied by e to the x. And on the outside of the parentheses we have a negative sign. And that's being multiplied by a positive. So a negative times a positive is going to give you a negative cosine of x times e to the x. And on the inside of the parentheses we have two negatives which give you a positive. So the negative on the outside being multiplied by a positive is going to give you a negative value. So we have the negative integral of the sine of x times e to the x dx. So I wouldn't be surprised at this point if many of you are wondering what are we doing with this problem? It doesn't look any simpler than what we started with. We still have an integral of the sine of x times the e to the x, which is not any simpler uh, than, than what we started with. But actually, it's exactly the same as what we started with. Notice how we started with the integral of e to the x times the sine of x. And that's exactly the same as the sine of x times the e to the x. So the integral we have now is exactly the same as what we started with. So this is actually how we are going to solve this problem. So this whole expression is equal to what we started with, which was the integral of the sine of x times e to the x dx. So now here comes the tricky part. In order to solve this, we're actually going to use a, a basic rule that you probably learned when you were in seventh grade. And that is whatever you add to one side of the equation, you need to add to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add the integral of the sine of x e to the x dx to both sides of the equation. Integral of the sine of x and e to the x dx. And the reason why I did that is because notice on the right side, the negative integral and the positive integral, they cancel out. And on the left hand side, we have two integrals that are exactly the same. So we can actually, they're actually like terms and we can add them together. And um, you can imagine that there's a one in front of both of them. So we have one plus one is equal to two times the integral of sine of x times e to the x dx. And on the right hand side, we have the sine of x times e to the x minus the cosine of x times e to the x. And now I want to get rid of this 2, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And on the left hand side, notice how we are back with our original integral. These 2's cancel out, and the only thing we're left with is our original integral, which is the integral of the sine of x times e to the x dx. And we know what our original integral is equal to. The right hand side, we have this sine of x times e to the x minus the cosine of x times e to the x, all divided by 2. And we can't forget that we need to put our constant plus c. So here is our solution to our problem. The integral of e to the x times the sine of x is equal to sine of x e to the x minus the cosine of x e to the x, all divided by 2 plus c. So I hope this gave you a, a better idea on integration by parts. 
Um, this is one of the harder examples, so uh, don't worry if you if you need to watch this video again. So I really hope that you're enjoying these. I will be making many more videos uh, in the future, so stay tuned, and I will see you in my next one.